you know, I've got this Kemper that I use for a lot of my tones, Dan. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a tone on there that is um, like a Dr. Z, but it's it reminds me of like an Andy Timmons or kind of Eric Johnson y tone. Yeah. I just love the sound of it. It's a lot of fun to play. Are you playing through the Kemper right now? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because like with playing, it, it's so easy to be inspired by a like a tone. And right. then you just start playing and kind of go with it, which is so great. Super cool. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Paul, Rusty, Eric, Stephen Bell is back. Bucket full of balls. Peekaboo, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings. Jack Waters. How you guys doing? Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us. As you're piling in here, uh, tell us where you're from. That'd be awesome. All right. Alex is here. Pete is here. White Rabbit is here. 07 Gaming. Vienna. All right. Germany. UK. It would be so cool as if there was like a map or something. We could see where everybody is. That would be right. so cool. Snowy Min- Minnesota. Snowing already in Minnesota. October. They got, wow. They got four inches yesterday. They got, I think they got seven inches. Wow. We have a snow, snowstorm again tomorrow and then again on Sunday. Wow. Russell Roy from Denver. Where are, you, where, where are you in Denver, Russell? I used to live in Denver. Just curious. Buckinghamshire. Rotterdam. I don't know why I'm speaking in that. <laughs> <laughs> Rotter- Rotterdam. Norway. This is so cool. Germany. Uh, all right, guys, thanks for showing up today. Super cool to be with you again for another session of essential techniques. Today is our last and final workshop that we're doing uh, together, at least for this particular topic of essential techniques. This is the fifth, I believe, workshop that we've done. That's right. On essential techniques. That's right. Uh, the first one we did is feel the rhythm. Second one we did is picking perfection. The third is playing songs. The fourth is creative soloing. And today we're going to do a big old session on question and answer. Everything that you want to know about technique. And uh, while I'm getting my act together here, Steve, um, I was going to ask them to give us the link to the playlist. In case you guys missed any of the previous ones, you can go and check out all the workshops are going to be on the Guitar Zoom YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, type in Guitar Zoom, click on the uh, Guitar Zoom YouTube channel, and click on Playlists. And then under the playlist, you'll find all of the previous sessions that we've done, because all of these have been live. And then uh, you'll be able to check out the one that we're doing today. Guys, if you want to learn essential techniques, if you want to improve your playing on a fundamental level, and regardless of what style you are, and really regardless of uh, what your current skill set is, Steve has a new course for you. It's called Essential Techniques by Steve Stein, and it's available at guitarzoom.com. Just go there and click on the big banner at the top, and you can get all the information. There are several fast action bonuses before the introductory uh, price expires, which should be, I think, Monday is the last day. So you get all the bonuses, and you get the introductory price if you decide to invest in this course uh, before Monday, October 26th. Cool. And a whole lot of people have already done that. And by the way, guys, if you're here and you're actually already signed up for essential techniques, tell us what you want to learn from that course. What's the number one reason you decided to purchase it and, uh, kind of what your goal is to accomplish. Like, what do you want to accomplish with essential techniques and get your questions ready. Everything that we're going to be talking about today in terms of your questions are going to be, um, if you could keep them directed on technique, and we can talk about, Steve can talk about what that is exactly. Um, That would be super helpful to everybody here. Hopefully everybody can learn some stuff and, uh, and you guys can get some value from what we're talking about today. All right, Steve, where do you want to take it from here, my friend? Well, we'll just start doing some Q&A here. I'm going to throw this up here. 
Uh, I'm not actually going to throw up. I'm going to throw. <laughs> so I just thought this might help us a little bit. What's your single biggest struggle with guitar? Okay. Mm. Now I see we've already got a couple questions about um, sweeping, sweep picking. So we'll start with that. I'm just going to answer some questions. And then if we need to go into a bit more detail with some techniques, we can certainly do that. Um, I'm just going to do this before we even start, let you know that like I live in, um, North Dakota. So right now it's cold and it's just going to get colder and then it'll get brutally cold <laughs> and then it'll get deathly cold. And then it'll warm up a little bit by April or May or June. Wow. So the first thing I want to explain all, to all of you, especially like if you're like me and my circulation isn't as good as it was 20 years ago, right? So one of the most important things that I need to do every single day when I play, and certainly when it gets colder outside, is warm up my hands. So I do a lot of stretching with my hands, and I do a lot of, like, what I do is I squeeze my fingertips, and it makes the blood flow to my fingertips. There's all kinds of different things that you can do, but I'm just going to remind you that warming up before you actually practice is a really beneficial thing. Now, you might live in a climate where you really never have to do that. I, unfortunately, do not live in that climate. So stretching... <laughs> Like, and I had carpal tunnel syndrome with my hands. So stretching, one of the biggest stretches that I love to do is when I do, I put my, the bottoms of my hands together like this and I bring them down like this. And then what I do is I, I push my elbow toward the wall. It's not allowed to come up though. It's got to stay down. And these are some really great stretches that you can do to um, stretch out all the muscles that you need in for your guitar playing there. You can do these sorts of things, that sort of, there's all kinds of things. I'm just telling you that like for me, dealing with the cold that's something that I, I have to deal with a lot living in north dakota and so stretching out and warming up your hands is something really important i actually have a heater right over here that i run and when i when i play uh when i travel and play i actually have a little travel heater that i bring and i put on top of my amp and then i just warm up my hands whenever i need to run them under warm water all kinds of different things like that so that's crazy yeah yeah so uh let me do this do you mind if i switch to this and then you can kind of search for, I'm going to start with the sweeping thing and then we'll go into whatever questions that you might see there, Dan. Sure. Okay. That'd be so, cool. Okay. So when we talk about sweeping, let me first explain to people that, that maybe don't know what that is. Okay. We have a, an ability on the guitar to play scales, obviously, but we also have the ability to play what's called arpeggios. Now an arpeggio is simply a broken, the, the definition is broken chord. So if I took an A minor chord, for instance, and I strum through it, it sounds like I'm playing a chord, because I am. But the difference is, is that as opposed to a piano when you can press down on all the notes at the same time, we as guitar players cannot do that. We have to start at whatever string and then push through. And what we do is do it so quickly that the ear perceives it as one sound, a chord. But what we're really doing is playing each string individually. If we slow that down, it becomes what we call an arpeggio. Okay? Now, arpeggios can be played lots of different ways on the guitar, but guitar players learn a technique called sweeping. And so arpeggios and sweeping really are the same thing. The difference is, is the speed in which you play them. So let me just show you something real quick here, and then I'll show you a couple of techniques, and then we'll move on to some other people as well. So let's say I was going to play an A minor arpeggio. So I go up to A on the 12th fret with my pinky, and I'm going to play 12, and then the next string 10, and the next string 9, and the next string, 10. So I'm playing the notes A, C, E, which are the root and third and fifth of A minor, and then I'm playing A, C, and then I'm gonna play E again. So I'm making this shape, if you will, that consists of the notes A, C, and E, or the notes of A minor chord. Now, if I play them slow, I can do all kinds of things melodically, and that is what we call an arpeggio. So I can do all kinds of different things. I can play in and out. But more importantly, I can wrap a scale around it so I can use that arpeggio as part of my solo. Now, if I play it faster, it becomes what we call the sweep. And the sweep is the action of the guitar pick as it pushes through those strings. So if you've never really done sweeping before, let's make this smaller and easier. So I'm going to go to the ninth fret of the third string, the 10th fret of the second string, 
and the eighth fret of the first string. So I have nine, 10, eight. And what I want you to notice here is that as I push through, what I want to do with the guitar pick is have it come to rest on the next string. So I push through and then push through onto the next string. So the string comes to rest on the next string. And as you get better with this, it's like strumming. So you're not doing this. You're not chicken picking, if you will, where you're picking up the pick like that. You're actually pushing it, forcing the pick through. And you start getting that sound. So it's really like doing, I always think of the song. It's kind of like that, where you're pushing that pick through as opposed to going. You know, something like that, it's impossible to do. So you're pushing that pick through. And so when you start doing sweeping, it's nice to find, a, you know, a simple way of starting just a couple of strings or three strings, just getting used to that pushing and the synchronization of those two hands. Very cool, dude. Yeah. Guys, uh, if you're just now joining, joining us, please uh, let us know if you have a particular question uh, regarding technique. And especially, what's your number one struggle that you're having right now with your guitar playing? Uh, today's the Q&A session. It's the last of these five sessions that we're doing for you here, here on Essential Techniques. And if you could, please keep your questions kind of focused on technique. And uh, what I'd like to do, Steve, if it's okay with you, is share the mind map just to kind of go over what techniques are so we can just refresh everybody's mind on kind of what we're talking about here And we, when we say technique because it can be kind of... It can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people, right? Uh, let me see if I can share. Guys, let me know if you can see this mind map. This is a behind the scenes look of uh, Steve's brain <laughs> of how he actually creates courses for you. So this is Steve's uh, thing here. It's completely unedited. Well, actually, it originally said techniques course, and then we just decided to call it essential techniques. Other than that, I haven't touched any of this stuff. Um, so you'll see, you're seeing exactly what Steve wrote here. You may see some spelling errors or whatever, but this is just Steve's quick um, mind map of how he actually creates courses. So when we're talking about technique, this is what we're talking about. For example, we're talking about uh, chords, open chords, power chords, bar chords, okay? We're talking about rhythm and strumming. So scratching, um, down and up strumming, patterns versus organic strumming. A lot of these are Steve's uh, particular terminology that he's developed over the years, like the kick and snare strumming or um, uh, the scratching thing. I, I know Steve is one of your signature things that you do. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Um, we're also talking about, let's see here. What else? Wow, this thing is difficult to move if you don't. Zoom out a little bit. Picking hand development. So if you have questions about picking control in terms of uh, styles of picks, how you hold the pick, your pick angle, your motion of movement, down picking, all of these are different topics that are in Steve's new course. Palm muting, alternate picking development, uh, pinch harmonics, string deadening, anything like this. Okay. We're also talking about uh, fret, fret hand development. So legato techniques, hammer-ons, pull-offs, those kinds of things, all the soloing things that are the Steve's already talking to you about. Uh, let's see. We talked about sweet picking a little minute ago. Arpeggios. There's a whole section on arpeggios. So uh, different types of slides, hand synchronization. So like legato versus picking staccato and all the different types of bends. Okay. Vibrato, things like that. That's what we're talking about. When we say technique, that's what we're referring to. And so if you have questions during this session regarding those type of topics that would be awesome and also your number one struggle that you're having right now with guitar we'll try to get to as many of your questions as we possibly can and if you want to get the course of course it's called essential techniques by steve stein and it's available at guitarzoom.com right now at the introductory price okay buddy okay so i see a lot of questions regarding like speed picking and synchronicity and all that kind of stuff and obviously that's that's kind of the 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 big stuff, right? 
And the techniques course goes into all sorts of things like that. But I'm going to remind everybody that has questions about that sort of thing is always remember that you have to, first of all, you have to develop your left and your right hands independently. You've got to learn to gain strength and independence strength speed stamina are the, the three things i always think of when you're be with, with the strength of your fingers they've got to be independent they've got to be strong and they've got to be able to work together right so when we talk about synchronicity whether it's speed picking uh whether it's you know again sweeping whatever it might be everything has to start with individual strength development and then move into slow synchronicity development so when you start doing something, for instance, with my left hand, it's what I call my fretting hand. This is where all my strength has to come from doing legato exercises. And there's all kinds of them in the course, but understand that when you do legato exercises, the point is you're trying to develop strength within all four fingers and all of their variable uh, combinations. So you can't just practice the same one over and over and over. You've got to learn to, because again, for every guitar player on the planet, these are the ones that are the problem. It's these fingers. These mm -hmm. guys really aren't as big of a problem. It's when you start implementing these that you have a problem. So you need to be able to, to work on different legato techniques to develop all of those combinations. So that's something I do is just a, a daily routine of practice is just practicing, you know, the 20 second and 30 second exercises, those sorts of things that are in the course um, with my fingers. Then I move over here and I've got some questions I've seen here too. So the most important thing when I start doing picking, whether it's the one that we did earlier in a session, which of course is in the course too, but um, where I do the three minute down picking or the alternate picking, right? As I do those techniques, and if you haven't seen those, you can go back and watch them in the playlist. But as I do those techniques, I'm thinking about relaxing. And again, we talked about using a metronome. We talked about trying to find the ideal speed to do these things at so you can actually do it for three straight minutes. But you're developing not only the ability to get stronger and faster, but you're also developing the ability to relax when you play. Because that's one of the big problems is people get so tense when they start doing things. And you can just watch it in their, their body language when they play. You've mm -hmm. got to learn to relax. So when uh, often, or I've seen a number of you ask about a uh, palm muting, for instance. Now, palm muting for me is literally taking the karate chop part of my hand and setting it where the string and the bridge meet. But you have to understand that if you're playing a Les Paul, it's going to feel different than it does on this Ibanez Strat style, right? So it can't only be what it feels like, it's got to be what it sounds like. So if I show you, if I go all the way back, too far back, and I start picking, there's no palm muting. If I start moving this way, you can hear that palm mute come into play. I'm not pressing hard, I'm literally just touching the string very gently with this part of my hand. If I move too far over, the string dies. So you've got to explore how it feels on the guitar that you like. If you've got a guitar that you love, you've got to find those sweet spots. And see, there's two different palm, for me, there's two different palm points. There's one that's very light. And there's one where I'm choking up more. So if I was playing heavier, I might want to move up just a little bit more and choke up on that palm mute. As opposed to being back here, where if I was back here, that might be more for like a... So I'm aware of the different sounds that I can get by putting my, my palm in a different position in terms of the kind of palm mute that I want. So when it comes to four finger exercises or speed picking exercises, like a lot of you are asking about, it all starts with synchronization. You've got to develop the independence in the hands and then you start practicing. You might put those together and just start practicing again. This is in the course, but you might start practicing just a sequence. And before you ever worry about it getting fast, the first thing you have to do is become comfortable with what that feels like, with what it sounds like. Notice how I can add a little palm mute in if I choose to. But to create that synchronization, it has to start with both of my hands being able to independently function 
and then becoming friends and actually working together. Because like I've said before, all of these things that we're talking about, you have to remind yourself that your left hand and your right hand really aren't friends with each other. Certainly in the beginning, they're not. They, they, they battle each other. If you're trying to make chords and strum at the same time, they're doing two completely different things. And just because you're playing the guitar, I always use the analogy of like a car engine, which I know nothing about. But, you know, we bring it to somebody to fix it and we just assume, you know, well, they have all the answers. They have people that fix certain parts of the engine, right? Or certain different kinds of engines and all these different things, all these different parts that go into it. Well, the guitar has a lot of components to it. The guitar playing has a lot of components to it. So the easiest thing to do, and this is what the techniques course is all about, is trying to get to the rudimentary, the, the basics of what essentials you need to be able to develop, whether you're speed picking or sweeping or palm muting or whatever it might be, right? So hopefully that kind of answers your questions there. Wow. There's a ton of questions. Um, guys, we're, we're trying to keep it focused on uh, techniques. So anything to do with technique, any question you have about technique and also your number one guitar struggle. Steve, are you, do you want me to feed you some questions or you have one? looks like I you have one here, but uh, let me go, go through a couple of that, I, that sure. I right now. So I see David Thompson says strumming, but that's all he says. But David, what I would do is go back to the first session that we did the first live session. And we talked all about strumming in that one. And that will mm -hmm. help you a little bit um, without having to take too much of this session. But um, you know, the most important thing with strumming is you're either coming from one of two places, either you're developing a strumming pattern or you're trying to learn how to organically strum to the music that you're listening to. Strumming comes from practicing what I call scratching. Let me shut off my delay and reverb there. And you learn how to add dynamics to that strum. So you learn how to strum down and up independently, allowing the arm to continue moving. And then you start learning to develop dynamics. And I go a lot more into that, uh, Dan and I do, in the first session of these live sessions. So you can find a playlist and go through that. Yeah, and there's a whole entire section of on just strumming and all the different techniques for that in Absolutely. the Essential Techniques course. That's right. Hey, I wanted to just mention real quick, uh, Mike, who's helping us with the questions and answers, can you please give them the link to the playlist somehow? Uh, which we keep mentioning over and over. And I'm, and I'm sure people would appreciate just a simple link that they can click on and go see that, that playlist. And then you can save it in case you missed any of the previous sessions. I was just looking at it. In fact, it's on the Guitar Zoom YouTube channel, guys. If you go there to the Guitar Zoom YouTube channel and you click on playlists, it's called Essential Techniques Live Guitar Workshop. The first one we did is called Feeling the Rhythm. The second one is Picking Perfection, Playing Songs. It's the third one. And the fourth one is Creative Soloing. Uh, and then today, of course, we're doing kind of all types of different techniques, um, but all of those workshops are there for you. And each one of them is over an hour long. And uh, hopefully you get a lot of a lot of value out of that. And everything that's discussed in those workshops is included in the new course, which is six and a half hours long. It's called Essential Techniques. and It's available right now at the um, at the introductory price, which will be going up. And I do want to mention one other thing about that. Uh, some people had asked about the fast action bonuses on the page for the first 50, first 100, et cetera. Those were gone the very first day that we, um, that we launched this course. But I will tell you this, if you decide to go and uh, invest in essential techniques during these live sessions, we will personally make sure that you get those fast action bonuses. Okay. And one of them actually is, I just noticed this is the chord chasing mastery course. You get the entire chord chasing mastery course as a fast action bonus when you get the essential techniques course. And uh, if you check it out, the chord chasing course is actually available on our website, it sells every day there. It sells every day for $69. And I was just looking at the testimonials just for that particular course. There's just, it's unbelievable. It has um, all five star reviews. And so you get that course free when you invest in uh, the, the essential techniques course. So just want to mention that for you guys that we have that resource available for you at guitarzoom.com. Okay, John Phillips, holding the pick and angle of it. Yeah, and I see there's a few other people that have asked about this too, but basically with holding the pick, and again, I think we talked about this in the first session too, and of course we talk about it in the course, but 
the, the big thing is, is understanding that there's two different angles and it's different for everybody. The first thing to understand is that your guitar is probably already at an angle, unless you're playing absolutely straight across like this. The guitar is already angled. So when you grab that guitar pick and you go to start playing, you have to decide at what angle you want to be at from here, moving from left to right, and you also have an angle of moving up and down. And again, many times people might tell you there's only one right way to do this, and for, to be honest, the only right way to do it is the way that feels best to you that works for whatever situation you find yourself in. But understand, the more you turn the pick, the benefit is, the easier it is to get through the string because you'll slide through. The downside is, is you're gonna miss that percussive element. when you angle it too much. Now again, it depends on what it is that you're trying to do. You might need to angle it to slide through a, a certain lick that you're trying to play, right? And you might want to, to flatten it out a little bit for more aggressive picking. Whatever it is you might be doing, to flatten it out and get a little bit more of that percussive element. So you have to think about those two things. As you start learning to play patterns that move like up the guitar that way, okay, then you start thinking not only of this angle, but you start trying to figure out whether or not this angle, the up and down angle is gonna benefit you. Right? And after a while, I mean, I've been doing this so long that it all just kind of happens for me, but there was certainly a time when I had to sit and think about you know, how I was gonna approach that. But it all comes from thinking about, as I said before, you gotta slow everything down and you gotta think about your approach, your attack, the sound that you're making, how it feels. And those things can't happen when you're just trying, you know, Again, it's, it's, I always think it's like being chased by a rabid dog or something. All <laughs> just fight or flight at that point. You're just running as fast as you possibly can. You're not concentrating on anything except surviving. With guitar playing, we really don't have to think of it that way unless maybe we're scared on stage or something like that. But, you know, it's slowing everything down, slowing down the whole process, learning to relax and learning to isolate the elements that we're trying to do and really develop those to automation so we don't think about them anymore. I want to answer a really quick question that I, dang it, these things keep, uh, <laughs> they're coming in so fast, I can't, anyway, uh, let's see, I found, oh, uh, this, this is from YouTube user, it's from Ty, um, he says, what should I practice every day, I'm confused, and I don't know what to do, and before you jump in, Steve, I just want to mention uh, that Steve and I talked about this years ago, about as guitar players, as musicians, you know, no one really teaches you. They teach you theory. They teach you technique. They teach you, teach you whatever licks and like all this stuff, but no one actually teaches you how to practice. Like what should your daily practice routine look like? And Steve created an entire course. So it's called the ultimate practice routine. It's an entire course dedicated to that exact issue. So if you're having that problem of like, man, I sit down, I just noodle around. I feel like I get up and I don't make any progress. That is the course that you want to get. It's called the ultimate practice routine, and that's available at Guitar Zoom. Uh, but Steve, if you wanted to try to answer that uh, maybe quickly here, you could as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the most important thing is, is that just about everybody on here has a different practice routine, right? It depends on what it is you're trying to do. And that's part of the first battle into this guitar funnel when you first start learning how to play, is what am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be working on? And what I have found that works really well is if you start trying to play, and again, you always have to remember to keep the realm of realism around your head, right? We, we all want to be really good at whatever, or we all want to succeed at whatever, and that's all wonderful. But my job is to try and teach people about small wins, tiny steps of success, right? And, and those tiny steps can lead to whatever it is you want, but it has to start with something real. Otherwise, what we do is we get dis, we get uh, you know frustrated and we go, well, I can't do this, or I'll never get to whatever. You have to take small pieces. So if you start with maybe just learning how to play some songs that you like that sound like they are in the realm of where you are in your playing. If you listen to something and, and your brain is going, wow, that sounds like it's gonna be a lot. I'm not saying you shouldn't practice it. What I'm saying though, is if every time you grab the guitar, you set yourself up for failure like that, you're gonna get frustrated. 
So the first step into this is you've got to start learning to realize where you are in your playing and the things that you can and can't do and try and find like-minded elements out there that fit into that space. Because like, for instance, practicing, practicing songs, songs that you like that fit into this realm, they're going to benefit you in multiple ways. They're going to benefit your ear. They're going to benefit your timing. They're going to benefit your technique. They're going to benefit your memorization skills. There's all kinds of things that it'll do to benefit you. And also, as you start learning songs, it starts dialing in your knowledge of you and what you can and can't do on the guitar. Then that kind of leads it out of this, this little funnel we've created here into, okay, so I need to work on my picking more or I need to work on my alternate picking more or I need to work mm. on my timing more or I need to work on listening skills a bit more. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm saying when you listen to a song, knowing where you are, there's all kinds of places that those things can lead you to. But if you refer to those things from a realistic perspective of playing some songs, at least that's a great way to, to enter this realm. Because if you just go, well, I'm supposed to work on scales and I'm supposed to work on theory and I'm supposed to work on technique and I'm supposed to work on this. Why are you supposed to do that? Like who said, who said you're supposed to do that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you're not fitting into where you are in your playing and who you're trying to be, again, not you 20 years from now, but you today, so tomorrow you can have a small element of success, right? Or next week, there's something tangible that you now have realized that, that works better for you. If, if that makes sense, that, that's kind of the way I would describe that. Yes. Awesome. Um, you have another question or don't me to feed you one? Uh, go ahead. Um, okay, I'm actually looking at the big list. Okay, so I got one here. And then oh, go ahead, man. So I've got one. It says pinch harmonics are not happening. How can I get them? Well, pinch harmonics really occur. I, I'm going to get this out of the way so you can see. Pinch harmonics really occur with the guitar pick. When I was first learning how to do pinch harmonics, and I'm going to add a little distortion here just so it sounds a little more Zach Wilde. Okay. Pinch harmonics, I always thought it was something to do with the way that they did vibrato and stuff like that, and it's not. It has everything to do with just angling the guitar pick. So if you think about it, if I just take this note right here. Now listen, as I turn the pick this way. So there's two things happening. Number one, as I turn the pick, my thumb is, as I pick through with the guitar pick, of course the pick is angled at this point, my thumb is the last thing to touch that string. The thumb is what causes the harmonic. The flesh of my thumb is literally what's causing that harmonic. And the second thing is, depending on where you are on that string, this direction, you're gonna get different uh, harmonics and some of them are going to be more prominent. And those are the ones you want to find. Again, your guitar, your pickups, your tone, all those things are going to make a difference. But if I do this. You'll notice there's different sounds. So what I do is find the, where it's most comfortable. To grab one. And I, I'm adding vibrato and things like that, but I don't need to. It just sounds way cooler, right? But it's literally just turning the pick. I'm not pushing hard or anything like that. I'm literally just turning it. The pick is causing the harmonic. And again, I'm finding where the best place to be to get that sound. Mm. Kim Wrinkle asks, okay. she says, uh, any main differences in specific technique between acoustic and electric? My first electric arrives November 1st and it's a Stratocaster. Congratulations, Kim, on your new guitar. Yeah, the, there are most certainly differences in techniques. I mean, uh, you can do a lot of the same things, but it all depends on how the guitar is set up. When people ask me if I play both acoustic and electric, of course I play both. But I am an electric guitar player by nature, right? Where Michael Hedges is more of an acoustic guitar player or uh, Tommy Emmanuel is an, an acoustic guitar player by nature. Um, it's not that I don't love acoustic. I love acoustic, but I've just look at me for God's sakes. I grew up with an electric guitar, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so electric is, is what I think about. So when I grab an acoustic, there are things that I'll, I mean, I'll relax on in terms of my playing, but oftentimes I like my acoustic to, to feel a lot like my electric. Cause I still want to be able to play a lot of the things that I do on an acoustic. 
right? But in acoustic, you're not dealing with, the strings tend to be thicker, the scale tends to be shorter, right? You're not dealing with 24 frets, that sort of thing. Um, the, obviously, the tone is different. An acoustic guitar is way more dynamic, you know, in terms of volume and all those sorts of things. It, it's a beautiful instrument for that. Um, but, you know, electric guitar, oftentimes we have distortion and things like that that can make a difference. So fundamentally, they are the same thing. But realistically, you approach them a little bit differently. And even if you try to approach them exactly the same, you're not going to be able to play exactly the same way on both instruments. Right. One of the questions we got is, is it, um, is this new Essential Techniques course that you've created, Steve, is it applicable to guitarists who only play acoustic? Uh, it seems that it's more electric, but could people that only play acoustic also benefit? Oh, for sure. Anybody would benefit from it, but there's no doubt that there's elements in there that are more geared toward electric players. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that everything in there is specifically, I mean, learning to pick, learning to strengthen your hands, learning to strum, learning to chord, learning to, to do all of those things are a universal element. It's how you use them that that's different for each person. But I mean, you, you have to learn those regardless of playing acoustic or electric. Right. Uh, here's a good one from, um, oh, sorry, I lost it. Okay, from Eric Strat. Okay. He, he asks, after strumming for over two minutes, sometimes I feel the need to reposition my pick because it spins. Yes. Um, I do not have that problem anymore, but there was a time in my playing that I very much had that problem. And I know this is a terrible answer, but it goes away over time. Okay, the, the better you get at gripping the pick, the better you understand about gripping the pick and trying out different guitar picks and finding a pick that best suits your grip, your hand size, any issues that you've got, things like that. Like I just did a, a video not that long ago on a pick made by a company called Bog Street. And it, it has, it's a three-sided pick with a hole in the center and their whole point to that was to make a pick that was just easier for people to grab on a natural uh a natural level and i i liked the idea of what they were doing i'm not using the pick i have a pick that fits what i already do but i i like the fact that there's still companies out there that are trying to to find a pick that works better for people that maybe have arthritis or have had an, an injury in their, you know, in their lifetime or something like that. And, and they're having a hard time holding that pick. If it's just that you haven't been doing that that long, again, two things. Number one, you've got to give it time. You've got to think about how you're grabbing that pick, I guess would be the second thing. And the third thing is you've got to try different picks. This is a weird thing too, because picks and strings and pickups and guitars and cables and amps, we can get obsessive compulsive about all these things and the truth is it still has to come down to comfortability for us right you've probably mm -hmm. seen that video where like joe satriani plays a hundred dollar guitar at a kmart or something like that i forget what it is and he still kind of sounds like joe satriani right <laughs> we have to find what, what's most comfortable for us so it isn't always just about hey you know i play Ibanez and you should too it's not really that as much as you got to find what works best for you. So I, I think finding the right guitar pick for you makes a big difference. Some have holes in them, some have raised lettering on them, some have like this chalky substance on them, and they're all meant for exactly what you're talking about. It's just you got to try them and find what works. And if you decide a week later that you like something else, so what? So you, now you like something else. Yeah, love it. Guys, you're about halfway through here. If anybody is just now joining us, uh, today we're doing a Q&A session about technique. So if you have questions about technique, whether it's rhythm, rhythm strumming, left hand, right hand synchronization, scratching, uh, swing rhythm versus uh, you know, a shuffle rhythm or a straight rhythm, anything to do with arpeggios, hammer-ons, pull-offs, bends, um, sweep picking, any of that kind of stuff that's specific to technique, please let us know your questions and Steve will try to answer them. Um, here's one. Does it take 10? Go ahead, Steve. Yeah. Does it take 10,000 hours to be a virtuoso? How will you know if you're a virtuoso? I don't even live in the world of calling people virtuosos. And all the musicians that I know, and I know a lot of them, nobody uses those words. Okay. Here's what I'll tell you about that 10,000 hours thing. You can practice 10,000 hours and still not be good. Can you say that again, please? You can practice 10,000 hours and still not be good at it. Okay. Yes. 
I get the point of that original statement, okay? But the person that made that statement didn't say, do it while you're watching TV. Make sure you practice every day while you're watching TV and you're on Facebook or whatever, right? The person that said that probably was talking about immersed, focused practice, right? And it's a hypothetical number that we put out there um, for people to shoot for. And really, again, I'm using a more generic point to that. It depends on what it is you're trying to accomplish, right? So, you know, I don't, I, I try and even avoid terms like beginner, intermediate, advanced. Who the heck knows what an advanced player is versus an <laughs> intermediate player? I love it. That makes more sense. Look, I've just been playing for a little while. I only know a couple of chords. That makes sense. But what is an intermediate player? So here's my point to all of you with this. Okay. You need to make sure that if you're, if you're trying to achieve your goals, your practice is a focused practice. When you go to practice your guitar and improve on something, you're not just grabbing it and noodling, but you're really trying to improve on something. You should do that without distraction. Your phone should be off. The computer should be off or the TV should be off or whatever. And you just sit. There are times in my life that I've been in a zone where I just start practicing something and I just all of a sudden it's an hour or two or three hours later and you're still just doing this thing. And like some people will go, well, oh my God, I you know, only practice that for five minutes. That gets you closer to the 10,000 hours thing in, in, in the real world, right? Is really immersing yourself into whatever it is you're trying to do and develop that a bit more. So mm -hmm. I try to avoid 10, because then people go, oh, I practiced for 10,000 hours. I am great, right? Mm -hmm. I never say that about me, ever. Okay, my job is to continue doing this and continue learning and continue teaching and continue playing until I can't anymore. That's what it is. It has nothing to do with however, there are some things that I can do pretty well, I'm pretty sure. There are other things that I can't do very well. I'm just like you, right? It's just I've been playing for a long time and I've been speaking for a long time. So I've developed these other elements. But listen, there's a, I always tell people whenever I do like clinics and stuff like that, I say, how many of you, you know, are teachers or how many of you can fix a car? How many of you build houses? I have, I have no skills other than this. I couldn't change the oil on my car if I wanted to, I, I could, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's all kinds of skills. I got a, a one of my best friends is, is a tradesman and he builds uh, decks and he builds garages and he builds all kinds of things like that. I can't do any of those things, right? Mm -hmm. So did he put in 10,000 hours to do that? I don't know, but he's really good at it. And I wish I could do those things, right? Right. So. Yeah, guys, that 10,000 hour rule, I hear it tossed around all the time. It came from Malcolm Gladwell's book. It's called Outliers. And if you're interested, there's actually a video of Malcolm Gladwell addressing, and it's called, uh, it's actually called Malcolm Gladwell Demystifies the 10,000 hour rule. And basically he is asked in this, conference or something he's doing about what the whole point of the 10,000 hour rule is. And, and I watched that video a while back because this question comes up all the time about 10,000 hours. It is not a magical number. And he actually talks about the fact that it's not a magical number. It's simply a general rule of thumb. And the point is this, the more you do something, the better you get at it. <laughs> and the more you, and the more you do it with intent. Yeah. Because, because listen, I, I've, I've taught, thousands of students in person, not just globally, that's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people, right? But in my hometown, I have taught thousands of students and I have enjoyed every minute of it, okay? But it's not like every one of those um, were spent improving, like those students. Sometimes they're in there because their parents told them to, or they're in there just because they enjoy being in my company for whatever reason. We get along and it's a it's an escape from their normal routine of their life and things like that. Just because they have the guitar and they're supposed to practice every day doesn't really mean that they're necessarily improving. You improve with will. You improve mm -hmm. with focus. You improve with determination and you certainly improve with time, right? Time yes. Time. So. Love it. Guys, we are about uh, 45 minutes in to this session right now. I just want to mention some resources for you in case you're joining us late. Uh, there seems to be people that just keep piling in here, which is super, super cool. Thank you for being here, Stephen. I always appreciate it. Uh, if you missed any of these previous live sessions, don't worry. 
We have them all for you on the YouTube channel that you can go back and watch. Each one's about an hour long. There's one on feeling the rhythm. There's one on picking perfection. There's one on playing songs. There's one on creative soloing, which is the one we just did the other day. And then today is the last of these five live uh, workshops on essential techniques that we're doing for you. All of them will be available for you on the Guitar Zoom YouTube channel. Just go there and click on the playlist and it's all there for you uh, in a nice, tidy playlist. You can watch all five hours of it, six hours, I'm sure. Um, everything that we talked about in the workshop is, is directly related to Steve's new course. It's called Essential Techniques by Steve Stein. It's available at guitarzoom.com. A whole lot of people have already signed up for it. Um, and if you'd like to do that, just go to guitarzoom.com, click on the banner that says Essential Techniques. It'll take you over to the page and then you'll get all the information about it and you can just sign up for the course. I do want to uh, address this question that keeps coming up about the fast action bonuses. Uh, this says first 50, first 100, first 150, whatever it is that uh, people who, who get the course uh, are going to get particular bonuses. I just actually uh, asked our one of our developers, if they could change that. We're just going to make everybody who orders through October 26th is going to get those bonuses. Cool. This is, we're just going to do that. And those bonuses are, uh, well, the ultimate rock guitar, that's an entire course that you're going to get. So if you go to our website, go to guitar zoom, click on the shop, you can find these bonuses that sell every single day for six, $69, $99 or whatever, it's, you're getting those for free when you get the Essential Techniques course. And one of them is Essential, uh, one of them is Ultimate Rock Guitar. The other is, the other is Chord Chasing Mastery, which is an awesome course about um, chasing chords. And we did a, actually we did a session when we touched on this uh, in one of the live workshops, but you get that course, it's called Chord Chasing Mastery, where you actually follow the chords as you play and you do your solos. And then the, you also get solos of the 70s, which is another course. And somebody asked about uh, practicing. One of the bonuses I just noticed is the ultimate daily practice guide. So it's actually, I think it's a, uh, la, 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 la. is it a PDF or is it a video? I'm not sure. Maybe we we'll get some information on that, guys. That'd be awesome about what exactly it is. But anyway, you get all of that stuff. And we just decided that because we want to be cool, uh, everybody who gets essential techniques through October 26 is going to get all of those bonuses. So don't worry if it says first 50, first 100, whatever, you're going to get it. Okay. You're going to get it. All right. Let's take some more, uh, questions, Steve, you got one or you want me to feed you one, buddy? Uh, no, go ahead and give me one. Joe says, hi, Steve, any insights or exercises to work on muting and developing clean playing? Well, there's two things I can tell you. And again, it all depends on what context you're talking about. If you're strumming or something like that, it's a little bit different. But when you go to play, let's say I was going to... Hey, you might want to minimize me, buddy. Oh, sure. Um, let's say you were going to, you were doing a melody or you were going to do some soloing or something. When you start playing on stage and you play really loud, what you start realizing is unless you control all your strings all the time, you wind up with a whole lot of unwanted noise. Not that you don't notice that at lower volumes, but you really notice it when you get louder. So the one thing I always tell people is make sure when you're playing, the rock star element of playing is what people hear. The real element is pl of playing is all the stuff you're controlling behind the scenes. So for instance, when I play, if I go to play this, I'm just going to the 10th fret of the second string. If I play that note, all the other strings are deadened at that point. So you'll notice this hand is touching. It's touching all the strings above the second fret, except the third string. The third string is actually being touched by the tips, one or more of my fingers from my left hand. So they touch the third string right above. And why do I do that? So I've got a little leeway when I go to pick. So every time I shift, the tips of my fingers, again, one or more, are going to touch the string right above. And then everything else above that is being deadened by this hand. As I get into the thicker strings, everything is being deadened by my index finger, and again, maybe some other fingers, but those fingers are deadening the rest of those strings. So as I move, You see how somebody's always controlling all the strings? So you only hear the string that I want you to hear. 
No, if I want more than one string, then of course those get, get adjusted a little bit, but I'm still touching all the strings on the outside. So that's how you learn how to control those strings. If you were strumming, let's say I was doing a power chord. Again, I'm deadening out the strings I don't want, so even though I want these three strings, these are deadened. So if I do accidentally strum them, you're not gonna hear them anyway. If I was playing a fifth string power chord, the sixth string is deadened by my index finger. So I don't have to sit and be careful about like hitting, you know, the right string or something like that. I just play. And I kill those strings with my fingers. Amazing. Sorry, Steve, I got distracted. We just had an unbelievable comment. Okay. <laughs> I'm not really sure how to share this. <clears throat> uh, this is good, though. And, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up, Who's Steve, Darren... Seacrest. Yeah, I can only show a little bit of that, but Darren Seacrest. Um, and this, by the way, is I happen to know Steve personally, guys, and you would not believe. Well, of course you would believe. This guy is an unbelievable person, just a human being, and not not only just a great teacher and all of that, and can help you, but also a great human being. And I was with Steve in Nashville, Tennessee. We did a live event for our International Guitar Players Association a few years ago. And I was with there and there was a gentleman who came up and, and came up and shared a very personal story about how basically uh, he had a drinking problem uh, and uh, he was going through a lot of really bad things in his life. And he eventually he stumbled on one of Steve's videos on YouTube, eventually uh, really got into the guitar again. And because of guitar playing, turned his life around and actually I can't remember if he completely stopped drinking or, or he, he got himself he got his act together. The point is, I realized right then when, when Steve and I were standing there that this stuff actually changes people's lives. And this is actually another awesome comment uh, that I just want to share with everybody in case, because I know the world's kind of crazy right now. And I just want to share this because sometimes you need to hear this stuff. This Darren Seacrest, and he posted this publicly, so I don't have any problem reading it. He says, I can't thank you enough. Two years ago, I lost my leg and became blind. After working 30 plus years, I found being unable to work was even more depressing than my physical uh, injuries. I decided to try and teach myself to play guitar and stay occupied. My goals were just to learn a few slow three chord songs to strum along to. I didn't think I was capable of more. I have a small amount of vision in my right eye, so I started looking online for resources after watching your videos for the last few months. I changed my goals to learning music theory and truly learning to play can't thank you enough. This might have saved my life. So I think that's just a testimony to the fact that Steve, you're helping out so many people and we don't get to hear those stories a lot. And obviously not everybody's situation is that dire, but um, I want to thank you just for the privilege of getting to work with you for so many years. And uh, it makes me feel great. And I know it makes you feel great. And um, hopefully we can continue to help people for a very long time. So thank you, sir. Well, you're welcome. And I mean, you know, it's important to everybody to remember that we, we make free content for people that want free content and we make paid content for people that want paid content. But either way you look at it, the most important thing is, is that people are enjoying themselves. Like what I have found in, in this music industry is that it's, it's not that there aren't people out there that want to take this uber serious and want to get really good because there's a ton of you, right? but you have to enjoy the journey to some degree. If it's nothing but, you know, a weight around your neck, what's the point? You know, we, uh, none of us are getting any younger. And mm. the whole point of all of this is, is that you need, like I said before, you need to find small ways of motivating yourself and enjoying the journey. Otherwise, you know, and I wasn't that way. When I was a kid, I, I was very, very hard on myself and, and always frustrated and, very angry because I couldn't do the things I wanted to do on the guitar. And I think that's kind of why one of the reasons, uh, not why, but certainly one of the reasons um, that I started teaching was trying to get people to understand there's a better way. I mean, there's, there's way better ways than that. Um, you've got to give yourself a, a little bit of a break and, and again, try and enjoy the journey a little bit. So I would like to ask everybody who's watching right now, um, 
let's change it up just a minute. We talk about techniques and we talk about these specific things, which is awesome. And that's what the course is for really guys. Uh, and that's what all these previous things are for on YouTube, all these workshops that we've done. Um, what I'm really interested in is how has playing the guitar affected your life? Just Ooh. let's, let's take this, let's take like Darren's, that. Darren's awesome comment here. And thank you for yeah, the courage you. to share that with us. That was awesome. How has guitar playing changed your life? And let's read some of those comments. I think that would be super interesting just for everybody. Cause that's really, if you think about it, when we play guitar, like, what are we trying to do? We're trying to be a better version of ourselves. Maybe we're trying to <clears throat> develop a new habit. Maybe you need to whatever, uh, do some bad habit less. And so you pick up guitar or maybe you need an outlet or maybe you just are super creative. Like tell us, tell us, Steven, I would love to know how has guitar playing changed your life? Um, Danny Tucker says drastically for the better and give us some examples. Like I'm throwing some on the screen for you. Oh, cool. I'll let you read those in. Well, I'm just going to hammer through some of these. So, so drastic. You for, Pat Perry says, I decided to pick it up after getting sober nine months ago. Something to dive into. Awesome, Pat. Help me cope with the stress in my life. Awesome. Diamonds fun. It affects my music taste. Like I hate pop songs and every song that I don't have has a guitar solo. <laughs> Old school right there, man. Eugene Bartas, change your life. It's always there more uh, than you ever know. It brings joy to me. <clears throat> if I'm sad, it makes me happy to be able to, and then it's cut off. This is so cool, man. I wish we'd have done more of this kind of thing. Um, <laughs> I got a good one coming up here. All right, go ahead. Russell says, well, I have less money, which is very true. <laughs> Wow. Uh, one person says, I lost my wife to a heart attack 10 years ago. Guitar literally kept me sane and my heart from breaking or something. I'm sorry. It just, it, they're just, they're flying in so fast. It's hard for me to read them all. I've connected with my son on many new levels, teaching him how to play. Yeah. You know, I, I've done some really awesome things in terms of my guitar playing and, and, uh, the industry. But one of my favorite things is doing, shows with my daughter she and i she'll sing and i play guitar and they're for little audiences and it's a lot of fun um i'm retired and keeps my brain sharp there's actually some uh there's actually some scientific studies on that if you guys want to google them up actually music is is very good for your brain gives you more friends and also uh better youth life man I think guitar player, I think especially the youth, so young folks out there listening, <laughs> man, how about putting the phone down and, uh, and picking up your guitar more? I think you might be a happier person. I've, I've read some studies about young folks spending so much damn time on these phones that they're just like sucking their soul away. And I know you and I, Steve, we grew up in the pre-internet era, and I know I spent four or five hours a day playing guitar for many years of my life and don't regret it a bit. Yeah, no, I, I certainly don't either. But, you know, for, for me, for instance, the difference was is I played so much that I didn't do a lot of other things. Like, I played, you know, I had friends and things like that, but I just, I played, especially when I got to college, I played all the time. And, um, but, you know, I mean, that's the thing is, is it, it certainly kept me out of trouble, you know? I mean, it kept me moving in the, in the right direction. So I'm very thankful for all that. Yeah. Um. David I'm just things up here. So, Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you were doing that. I was just reading from the other the side. Time. I just, for people to read just different things. Midlife so. crisis helps me relax. Um, so the question guys is how has guitar changed your life? What does guitar playing mean to you? And why is it important? Like, why are you even here hanging out? Like you could be doing anything right now, right? You could be watching Netflix. You could be at work. You could be doing like, you could, be doing a lot of things, but you're here hanging out. And I'm just curious, how has guitar playing changed your life? And why do you play? Why is it important to you? 
because the better you are, the more fun it is to play, really. And so th that for me is a big inspiration to learn something new. Well, let um, me tell you this. I'm, I'm going to speak on that because the more you develop confidence in yourself, and I can speak on this on multiple levels of your life, but let's just talk about guitar playing, okay? The less you compare yourself to everybody else and the more you find where your worthiness lies in, in this instrument, the faster you're going to realize that you can gain confidence and comfortability in what it is that you're doing. We constantly play the compare game and it's an impossible game to win. Like you, you can never win in the compare game. Every time you go on social media, you watch some video and go, I wish I could do that, or I can't do that, or I suck because I've watched this thing. You're never going to win. And so the, as soon as you stop playing that comparison game, and you start realizing what you can do and how you can enhance the things that you are doing to, to maybe elevate to another level in, in your playing, and you develop that comfort and that confidence, that's what gets you playing with bands. That's what gets you playing on stage. That's what gets you playing with other humans in whatever capacity is not always being scared because you're not good enough. And I was telling the story last summer, my daughter and I, or my daughter, my wife and I went to this outdoor thing where they were selling clothes and they had food and whatever. This was actually it would have been the summer before this was pre COVID world, right? Um, this would have been 2019. <laughs> And there was, Pretty there, were, moral. there were bands that would play, and by bands, I mean maybe it's a singer and a guitar player or something like that, right? Sure. And they would play every 45 minutes outside, and then a new band would come up, and a new band would come up. And what I noticed about all of them is, first of all, they were all vastly different from each other. And second of all, I wouldn't say that every one of those groups were... 10 on a 10 scale of the most incredible thing you've ever seen in your life. And I'm not saying that from a negative standpoint. What I'm saying is these people were doing their thing together, enjoying what they're doing, being outside, making music. People are watching, people are dancing, they're making money. They've accepted who they are and they're playing just as I've accepted who I am and Dan has and whatever, right? And they're making music and people are enjoying it. Mm. The musician is the one that goes, oh, well, you could have played a dominant seven flat nine chord. <laughs> Right? It's all that stuff. They don't care about that. And maybe they do, but at that moment in time, they're just making music and people are enjoying it. Yeah. So there's room for everybody when it comes to this guitar playing thing, this music thing, this songwriting thing, all of these different things. You just, you got to change your, your attitude because life is just way too short. God, it is, dude. I wanted to read this comment, Steve. Do you see the one that's from Wheels, W-E-E-L-Z-F-T? Wheels. No, no I, I have so many comments. Yeah, I do too. Anyway, this is one that Michael actually helped me. It, we have um, awesome support here at Guitar Zoom, and one of the guys helping me is uh, Michael. He put this in the comments um, in our in our thing here, so I can see it. So anyway, he says, "Well, I started playing guitar when I was 16. I stepped away from it at 25, which is a very common thing, right? Life gets in the way when you're 16. You don't have nearly as much responsibility as you do when you're 25. So he says, I started playing when I was 16. I stepped away when I was 25, and I'm now almost 42. Recently, I was in a car accident that caused me to break five bones in my leg. I almost died. Guitar saved me. Yeah, and that's the thing is, is then the next question shouldn't be, well, do you know your arpeggios? Right. You know your modes, right? Because it's irrelevant. That's the whole thing that I, I need you to understand. And it is, you know, I had someone comment, it's easy for me to say because I've been playing a long time and that sort of thing. And it is because I'm acting like one of those adults right now that talks to my children, right? Mm -hmm. But you try and get people to understand that it, really there's, there's, you can enjoy the journey. It doesn't mean it's always easy. And it doesn't mean that you're going to get what you want out of it. You know, that's the weird thing. Like with, with my students, when I used to teach one-on-one -on -one students, the hardest thing was trying to get them to convert from, and I'm talking about younger students now, but getting them to convert from playing to playing with other people. Like, how do you find someone to jam with, right? How do you find somebody in your community to get together with? Does it have to be an immediate friend? And if you don't have any friends that play, well, what do you do, right? That's kind of a, kind of a, 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 a scary moment. I remember when I first started going to college, when I was in high school, I thought I was a rock star. I was, you know, everybody thought I was really good at guitar playing all this stuff. And then I went to college and realized how much I sucked. <laughs> so many other great guitar players. I was, I knew nothing. I was in, on such a low level when it came to all these other players. And, but it did wake me up and go, Oh, okay. 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 There's way more to this game than I thought there was. 
And I've spent my whole life trying to have my eyes open to a new game all the time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't end. Like you don't just stop. You just keep trying to find another situation to put yourself in where it's uncomfortable because you're, you're not the big fish in the, in the little pond, right? All you right. keep putting yourself, that's what I've always done with my life is keep trying to do something different. So I have more to learn. I just keep having more to learn. And I think that's one of the things that keeps my mind young is I, I never stop learning. I love it. Here's one. Um, David Donosky Den says, playing is my life. It makes me happier, focused on, on fitness, always learning, makes me a better all round person. Andres, Andres Lopez says, Corona sanity. Your courses have kept me in a positive place during Corona after losing my job. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that, Andres. I'm glad that you're jumping in there and diving into the courses and keeping yourself sane. Um, Matt Owen says, it, it's finally let me start creating my own music. Thanks to you guys, literally. And it's <clears throat> let me make videos of my own soundtracks. So somebody's there making their own music, which is super cool. Um, another person says, it taught me patience in other areas of my life. Boy, isn't that true? That is true. <laughs> it does teach you patience. Um, one person says, I started, oh, this is Kim. She says, I started uh, as a retiree at age 59, a big life changer. That's another thing, guys. It doesn't matter if you're young, old, or somewhere in between. You can always start somewhere. And uh, one of the comments says, my biggest struggle is I suck. How do I not suck? I think the first, uh, see if you agree with this, Steve. The first step in not sucking is deciding not to suck. And, and not putting yourself <laughs> against, that's right. And not putting yourself against a bar that's so high. Right. Here's what I found is that, especially it seems like it happens with my hard rock metal students. It always happened with them is that they set the bar so high because Ugh. the style of music is so intense sometimes up here. And, um, and you're right. I mean, the thing is, is you got to start small. You got to start developing things that make logical sense and then build into other things. And I was going to say, you just said about being young, old, or somewhere in between. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm young, old, and somewhere in between. So there you go. Yeah. This is so cool, guys. If you're just now joining us, we've, we've been on here for about an hour and... Apparently, people are still hanging on. <laughs> people are still hanging on with us. There's a whole lot of people still on this live call. We're streaming live right now to YouTube and to Facebook. And um, all I just want to mention that all the resources we have for you before we wrap up here, guys. One, all of the play, all of the, um, I'm sorry, all of the essential technique um, workshops that we've done for you are available on the YouTube channel. Okay. So if you missed any of the previous four sessions, this is actually the fifth session. If you missed any of the previous four, they're available on the guitar zoom YouTube channel. Just go to the playlists and tap on essential techniques, live guitar workshop. Uh, the first one was on rhythm. The second one was on picking. The third one was on playing songs. And the fourth one was on creative soloing. Everything that we're talking about today, guys, in regards to technique is um, expanded on and taught in depth in Steve's new course. It's called Essential Techniques by Steve Stein. It's available at guitarzoom.com. It's at an introductory price right now through October 26th, and then the price goes up. And there are also some uh, great bonuses that are actual courses that you get with it. And I've decided on this live call that everybody who orders through October 26 is going to get all the bonuses because they were originally for the first 50, first 100, first 150. So if you've already ordered this, you're going to get it. You're going to get all these bonuses. And if you decide to um, order through October 26, you're also going to get um, the fast action bonuses. So don't worry about this as first 50, first 100, whatever. Uh, the bonuses are Ultimate Rock Guitar, which is an entire course by Steve, Chord Chasing Mastery, which is an entire course, and solos of the 70s, as well as the ultimate practice guide, uh, a whole um, a whole bunch of jam tracks. We have it, we call it the ultimate jam track guitar pack. You get all the tab progress tracker and you get our private access to our private guitar zoom Facebook group. 
which Steve, I know that you're in there a lot more than I do. Can you just talk a little bit about the support that people get after they become a guitar zoom member inside the Facebook group? Tell them like what the flavor of that, that group is and, and kind of what goes on over there. You're talking about the community. Yeah. Well, the community is it, like many other communities, except that what we really focus on in there is, uh, positivity. I mean, trying to help each other out, answering questions. And, and, you know, I mean, social media now you've got trolls all over the, the place. And what we do is we really monitor that to make sure that if anybody winds up having, uh, feels like bringing the world down, we just boot them out of there. So yeah, it isn't about how many people we have in there. I could care less how many people are in there. It's about having a group of people in there that actually want to be in there and help each other out and support each other. And, um, that's what it is. So right. you know, if you wind up becoming a, a member of that group, that's that's awesome. And you contribute or watch or encourage or post or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's the most important thing. It's hard nowadays to monitor groups. It's just it's just getting worse and worse as social media goes with negativity and you know, all that kind of stuff. And that's our most important thing is trying to have a place where people can go and just talk about guitar. And we try and keep it guitar focused you know, keep it, keep it about guitar. Even like what Dan just asked you, um, in terms of the reason that you're playing, right? It isn't necessarily just guitar focused, but it is something positive that people enjoy talking about. Um, and I think there's a good relationship with most people. I'm sure some people will tell you, Kevin Dodds, I can see just said best community ever. Mm, um, that's awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Coffee House is awesome. Facebook group is awesome. You know, we, we really, and, and everybody tries to do help out. I mean, as a whole group, you know, not just me, uh, you know, monitoring or whatever, cause I've got a million things going on in my life. I can't always be in there, but the group itself does a really good job of helping each other out. And if, if something troll based does wind up getting post, they just scroll on by and just, it isn't worth their time and we'll get it out of there as soon as we can and take care of it. But they're just, you know, that's the thing is, is remembering the way we used to be where if, you know, if somebody's being negative, just walk, walk the other direction, forget about it. And then mm. let us take care of it. Let us move them out of there and move on, you know? Yeah. That's one thing, guys, that community, um, that we have for you, when you become a Guitarsium member and, and anything, if you purchase anything from Guitarsium, whether it's a VIP membership, whether you join playsongs.com, whether you, um, uh, are a masterclass member, Anything that you purchase from Guitar Zoom, you become a member and you get access to this private Facebook group that we're talking about, which is a super supportive community. Um, and that's another thing is that it's not a free community. <laughs> the only people that are in that group are serious about guitar and uh, they've invested in their education and they're there to, to help you and yeah, they do help each other. Piggyback off of that because it used to be open to anybody, but then you get all these people that are in there for the wrong reason. Yeah. So we wound up capping it off and it has to be somebody that's actually purchased something from guitar zoom and not for any other reason, then there has to be a reason for people to be in there other than to, to cause trouble. Mm. So if it's a guitar, somebody who bought something for guitar zoom, and still wants to cause trouble, then they're going to get booted out of there anyway. But and that but, happens. <laughs> and it does. It does. But most of the time it, it just helped so much when we stopped having it be just publicly open because, you know, people just go from group to group and just try and cause issues. And that isn't what, I mean, where can you go anymore where you can just enjoy the company of other people and not get in an argument about stuff constantly? Yeah. That's the point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm in the community agreed. Thank you so much, Steve. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. We really do appreciate you being here. I do want to read one more comment though. Guys, we did ask everybody if, you know, how has guitar playing changed your life? We're really interested in that. Here's one of the comments from Al Toulone. He says, I lost a good friend about a year ago that I used to jam with. I fell into a rut because of his passing, and I know that my friend would not have wanted me to, con to give up. So every time I pick up my guitar, I play with him in heaven. What a beautiful comment that is. And guys, I think that's the, that's the thing. It's like there's bigger reasons than, that we play guitar than just to show off or to impress people. It's, it's really a personal thing, which is so cool to get to uh, read your comments about because every single one of us has a story and Steve and I are interested in your story and helping you do whatever you want to do. If you want to play like Steve Vai, great. We have resources for that. If you want to just play in a coffee house, cool. If you want to learn three chord so uh, songs, we have that. It's called playsongs.com. 
which we've done a pretty bad job at promoting to tell you the truth. <laughs> but we, have, we have an entire membership, guys. It's, you just go to playsongs.com. It'll flip you over to the right page. And it's all about learning how to play songs. Steve has hundreds of songs in there that we've licensed from these different bands and artists if you just want to learn how to play songs. Um, so today, guys, uh, the just to wrap it up, Essential Techniques by Steve Stein. is Steve's new course is six and a half hours long. You're going to learn a lot of fundamental techniques that you need to know as a guitar player, regardless of your style, regardless of your skill set, regardless if you play acoustic or electric. There's something in there for everybody. It is currently on sale at the introductory price. The price will go up. You're going to get all the bonuses, every single thing that you uh, see on the webpage you're going to get, including the fast action bonuses when you order through October 26th. And um, we will uh, make sure that that happens. Even if you've already ordered that, we'll make sure that you get access to those additional bonuses. Just go to guitarzoom.com and click on the big banner that says Essential Techniques. All right, see, we've been on here about an hour and a half or hour and 15 minutes. This has been an awesome session. I want to do more of this. Uh... Oh, I have one quick question. I got to get going here soon, but I got one quick question here. Somebody said, what chair am I using? It's called AK Racing. And here's why. I, uh, I was diagnosed with osteoarthritis just recently, and I sat in this little chair and made thousands of videos. And I always hurt so bad when I got up. Right. So I find out I got osteoarthritis. And the, the problem here is, is that most often I'm only five foot two and finding a comfortable chair that you can sit in for hours a day is hard to find. Well, this company finally came out with a chair for short people. No way. It is, yes. That's what this chair is. It's, it's for people like under five foot four or something like that. So I wound up getting this chair because I, I literally sit here four or five hours a day, you know, making video and doing all the stuff that I do. So that's what it is. And it's helped a lot with my back and my osteoarthritis and all that sort of thing. So that's what, that's what the chair Super is. Super cool. And you got a new guitar. Is that the new one? No, this one's from, this one's from last year. Oh, okay. From last year. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. All right, guys. Um, I think that's probably, oh my gosh, I see we have tons more comments. So I just want to, I just want to, I, I got to read this. Um. <laughs> oh, here they come. Wow, you are really small. My <laughs> is like six feet. My, my dad was, was much taller than I am, but yes, I'm, yeah. I'm a small human. Yeah. Uh, Democrat or Republicans. That's funny. Somebody's bringing up politics. Wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. We have a policy. Absolutely. We are, we are here. We, we don't talk about coronavirus. We don't talk about politics. We just talk about guitar playing. And that's what we try to keep our community centered on because yeah, that's what we do. That's, that's what we're, that's our expertise. We're not politicians. We're not commentators. We're just guitar players and musicians. And we're trying to have help people have more fun. <laughs> that's our mission. I try, that's exactly it. I try and have the same conversations online that I do offline. Oh yeah. I try and be exactly the same person online that I is as I am when I'm not online. Yeah. And anybody that's met me before would tell you exactly the same thing. And yeah. I don't talk about, I could care less about politics and all those other things. I, I try and move to the positive side of things. Again, life is way too short. It really is. All right, guys, thank you for hanging with us for an hour and 15 minutes. We really appreciate you. If you got something out of this, please let us know in the comments. That would be so awesome. <laughs> Shredding has no height requirement. <laughs> I like that too. Absolutely true. <laughs> and uh, and look, if you decide to join uh, Guitar Zoom, guys, uh, the Essential Techniques course by Steve Steins available at guitarzoom.com. Before we go, I do want to ask one question to, to the people who are left here, uh, who are who are hanging on. We have been toying around this idea of having kind of like a, a membership that gives you access to multiple courses at once, kind of like Netflix for guitar guitar courses. I would just be curious, uh, the people who are hanging on here with us, how many of you would be interested in that type of membership from Guitar Zoom? So instead of buying like one course and then another course, and another course, you just pay like a membership fee and you get access to a whole bunch of different stuff. If that's something you'd be interested in, please let us know in the comments. Uh, it's a, 
it's something that we've been talking about and how to implement it. I'm not exactly sure, but a lot of people have asked us for it. I'm just curious if you guys would be interested in that um, and how, how, what, what the interest is. Looks like a whole lot of people are already saying they'd be interested in that. Yeah, because we, but what's happened is we, we used to have like three or four or five courses and now we have like, oh gosh, Steve, how many, by the way, I don't like being the big guy over here. <laughs> Well, let me let me answer this too quick. Uh, isn't that kind of like VIP? VIP is a different philosophy. VIP isn't about big courses. VIP, the point of the VIP club is to have small bits of information to absorb. So let's say you're busy and you just need a new lick or you just need a new thought, like we've been talking about, um, to change the, the way you're thinking about something. I love little bits of information. Like I've been playing a long time, so I've studied, I went to college, all those things. What I enjoy at, at my stage of guitar playing is little bits of information. So I just grab little things here and there. That's mm -hmm. what VIP is really about is small bits of information where if you don't understand theory, small bits of information might not really do very well. You might need a course that explains to you, hey, let's start at the beginning of music theory and let's plan this out. Or you've never soloed before, you don't understand scales, let's figure this out. VIP mm -hmm. isn't that. It's Okay, so you know your scale. Let's do something cool with Dorian, right? That sort of thing. Right. Yeah, a lot of people are saying uh, that they, they would love to do that. Um, so cool. Yeah, something that we've been toying around with. So I'm really, I'm really glad to see the positive feedback on that idea. Uh, that's going to be rolling out probably in 2021 if we can figure it out. But VIP, yeah, that's available right now. We actually have uh, Play Songs as a membership. So you can check that out, playsongs.com. Uh, it's all about playing songs, if you can imagine. And uh, then VIP is right there on the homepage. That's an annual membership. <clears throat> and uh, you get access to like hundreds of Steve's courses that are not available on YouTube or anything else. And then uh, we have Masterclass. And that's for serious folks who want to go super deep into theory. Um, there's a blues soloing course. There's some, there's soloing, uh, 80 soloing, 70 soloing, 60 soloing. There's, oh, there's a home recording class in that master class. If anybody's interested in that, in the master class membership. So lots of different resources for you. Guys, you can find us on YouTube, three different channels. Uh, the Guitar Zoom channel, Steve Stein channel, the Guitar Zoom songs channel, and then on Facebook. I was going to mention really quick too, if you are a VIP or a master class member, remember Monday night is our monthly live session. And our sessions now for a while are going to focus on home recording. So just remember that we talked cool. about that last, the last live session, this one starting this Monday, um, which is the last Monday of the month, I believe, uh, we're going to start talking about home recording. So mark that on your calendar if you are already a VIP or a masterclass member. So Russell Roy says, just bought the blues course. Awesome, Roy. Thank you for that. Guys, thank you so much for your support. Really appreciate it. If you're interested in Essential Techniques, it's available right now at the introductory price. Essential Techniques available at guitarzoom.com is Steve's newest course, six and a half hours long. Everything you need to know about technique to take your guitar playing really to any level that you want is the foundation of all the other stuff that you, any style that you want to play. It's available right now and with some cool bonuses. And um, what else to add, Steve? I'm good. All right, guys. Thanks again. Again, all of these things are available. All these workshops, when they're not live, are going to be put on the on the uh, Guitar Zoom YouTube channel for you guys. You can go back and watch those. And we will see you in the next live session that we do on whatever it's going to be. It hasn't been planned yet, but we'll let you know. Yeah, for these? No, no. We're oh. no, no. Whatever the next live session we do for whatever new oh, thing oh, we do. Oh, I see what you're saying. I, <laughs> yeah, there's always something coming up for sure. Yeah some but this is the last one essential techniques all right guys thanks again talk to you soon steve always a pleasure man it's you're an awesome guy it's a Thank blessing you, and a privilege to be here with you that. it's awesome to be here so everybody take care have a wonderful rest of your week if you live in the midwest sorry for the snow and uh, there you go <laughs> sounds good <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate you so much for being here. And thank you for all your awesome comments and feedback today. Steve and I really, really enjoyed this session. We hope to do it again soon. Take care, guys.